receive today the feast of St. Januarius. We read only the gospel. We stand for the gospel. We read only the gospel. We hear again in St. Mary's. Gospel of St. Matthew. They also they take the of St. Matthew, chapter 24. At that time, when Jesus was sitting on Mount Olivet, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the consummation of the world? And Jesus answering said to them, Take heed that no man seduce you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And they will seduce many. For you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be pestilences and famines, and earthquakes and places. And all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall put you to death. You should be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be scandalized, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall seduce many. And because iniquity hath abounded, the charity of many shall grow cold. If ye shall persevere to the end, you shall be saved. That's what the word of today's holy God. Hmm. Father, Son, and Amen. Today, the Feast of St. Januarius, patron bishop of Naples, who became a bishop when he was 20 years old, priest when he was 15, bishop when he was 20, and he had the great love of the city of Naples, the people of Naples, and this gospel is chosen today. There are many martyrs. He was a martyr, and there are many, many bishop martyrs. What makes St. Gennaro and St. January is special is that he continues to watch over his flock. He continues to watch over the people of Naples and he shall watch over them until the very ending of the world. He died in about the year 302, 303 AD, 1,700 years ago. And every year, except for very few years, including this year, I checked before coming in today, Today in, in Naples, on the September the 19th, 2020, the blood of Januarius did liquefy. He, is, he has an ongoing miracle that happens every single year on this day, except sometimes. And whenever it does not happen, there is an earthquake, or there is a war, a sacking of the city, great pestilence, or some great tribulation that falls upon the people of Naples, and oftentimes upon the people outside. Today, the people gathered in the church and said there were not as many people in the church as usual because they were worried about the coronavirus and they had to be socially distancing. And there were many thousands of people outside the church today. And then, and the Nova Soto Bishop stood in front of the, church, of, of the, the, the vial of the blood of St. Januarius, where there was one large vial of blood and one smaller one. And at 10.02 a.m. this morning, which would be, you know, they're six hours ahead over there, the blood did liquefy on the September the 19th. But why is this gospel chosen by the church? He that perseveres unto the end, he shall be saved. There shall come wars and rumors of wars. There shall, people shall hate one another. They shall betray one another. There shall be earthquakes and pestilences in various places. So many things are going to happen before the ending of the world. And this gospel, this famous gospel that is many times quoted in the course of 24th Sunday of the Pentecost, we have the longer edition of this gospel, this gospel, considering the day of judgment. The day we consider Januarius died probably before he was 30 years old. Maybe he lived a little bit beyond that. He was only bishop for a few years in the city of, of of Naples, and he was especially gifted at protecting the people 
or he himself would be put to death. But what he would do is protect them from the persecution of the Romans. He would hide them and protect them. And he had a special gift of protecting the people. So that many times they came, the Romans came to kill them, Romans came to harm them, and he protected his flock. He was somehow able to miraculously protect his flock. And those who were captured in the prisons, he would secretly go and visit them. Until one particular day, he visited St. Sotius, and he got caught. And he himself was boiled in oil and unharmed. And then they tried other torments, and he was unharmed, until eventually they chopped off his head. Very young bishop. But he was a bishop who was concerned about his holy, his flock, and who took care of them, and continues to take care of them until the ending of the world. There have been many, many bishops in Naples. After Januarius, who became bishop when he was 20 years old, after only five years being a priest at the age of 15, what did he do? He protected his flock, he gave them Christ, and then he shed his blood for his flock. And even though he is now in heaven for 1,700 years, he continues to watch over his flock. And whenever they are too displeased to God, Whenever there is something too wicked going on in the city, his blood does not liquefy, and something tragic happens that year. The Neapolitans gather each year for the last 1,700 years to watch his blood to see if it will, it will liquefy. Sometimes it liquefies in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes just before midnight. And the people pray and pray, and then they become angry, and they become happy, and they pray and they pray until the blood liquefies. It does not know what time it will liquefy at different times. But what is it that Christ commands of us during the time of great difficulties? And why is the devil putting fear in our minds? Why is he bringing up all kinds of troubles, economic troubles, rumors of wars, rumors of civil war, rumors of all kinds of difficulties? What is he after? In fact, he's after three things. He's after the destruction of faith, he's after the destruction of hope, and he's after the destruction of charity. These three things are the principles of the supernatural life. These are the things that make us to be thought living members of God, children of God. They're the principles of everything that we do. And when these principles are inside of us, we cannot be harmed by Satan. But now we're in a time in which we're in the great heading towards the great and final battle. And in this great and final battle, what's it about? It's back to the basics. The devil is out to destroy our faith. Now he cannot destroy the faith of many, for they have decided they will believe the truth. And here we are to remember, the Pharisees had the faith. The Sadducees were heretics. But the Pharisees had the true faith. The Pharisees did not believe in any false doctrine, and they held true to the doctrine. But what did the devil try to do to those who were Pharisees in the time of Christ? And those of the Pharisees that were his followers, he knew that the devil could do, he could not take away the faith of everyone. He wants to take away all our faith. But he knows that he cannot take away the faith of every man on earth. There will always be some souls who keep the faith. And the faith is like is the seed that grows back and grows back and grows back. So as long as the faith is there, then our church will never cease and all of the virtues and the saints will grow back and grow back and grow back. Remember that Satan knows that he cannot completely eradicate the faith, although he wants to. Now in many, many souls, they have given up the faith and they no longer believe all the teachings of Jesus Christ. But then there are those souls who have the faith, and what does the devil do with them? He cannot take away each of our faith, all of our faith. But what does he do? He attacks our hope, and he attacks our charity. And therefore, what is he going to do? He's going to get us to betray one another, to hate one another, to spit on one another, to curse one another. Even though we have the faith, we will all spit one upon the other. And in this way, we lose charity. And then he will take away our hope that even though we know that God is going to win, 
Even though that we know Satan is going to lose, we don't know where we fit in that, and we lose hope. We want to be there at the victory. Will we be alive? We don't know. We lose hope. We want to be on the side of God. Even though we know that God is going to win, if we don't know if we're going to be on his side or when the victory shall come, therefore he attacks our hope. Young men and young women today still need to get married. Young men and young women today still need to become sisters and to become brothers and to become priests. They still need to live their life as children of God. They still need to live in Christ. But he tries to take away their hope. You can't live in Christ in this world anymore. You are not able to live in Christ anymore. They have all compromised. They've all walked away. Only a few are keeping the faith. And how can you persevere? Even if you have the faith, you cannot persevere. Here we see the living faith of St. Januarius, the very young bishop, who was only 20 years old when he became a bishop. But he had faith, and the faith translated into a perfect charity by which he loved his flock. And as it says in the gospel, he loved them unto the end. He protected them unto the end. So that now he's been dead for 1,715 years. And yet he continues to protect his flock. And he will continue to protect them until the ending of the world. And hence this gospel was chosen today. This familiar gospel, St. Matthew chapter 24, speaking about the ending of the world. That St. Januarius is still doing his work. He's still working as a bishop, even now, a thousand, seven hundred years after he has died. He's still working as a bishop. And remember also that the other saints are also still working. St. Anthony is still working. St. Pius X is still working. St. Joseph is still working. The Holy Mother of God is always working. And that we have an army of saints on our side. That is why when the foolish, ignorant followers of Vatican II stood up against Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, and they said, you stand alone. You alone are going to be against several thousand bishops. You alone against the Holy Father. You alone against the whole world. And he said, I do not stand alone. I stand on the bishops and saints of the last 2,000 years. Put them on one side, and they are still here today. St. Pius X cannot hear your confession. St. Pius X cannot absolve you of your sins or give you the Holy Mass. But St. Pius X is still here in his teaching. He's still here in his spirit. He is still here by his prayers and by his power as an intercessor in heaven. He is still here right now at this Holy Mass. And the angels are here. And we outnumber all the enemies of God. St. Januarius is here. And St. Emerenziana is here. And so many other saints, they are here. And they are going to protect us in the great fight. We must remember that we are not alone. And this is important in our battle against the attack of Satan by which he attacks our hope. We should not lose hope or confidence. We know that troubles are ahead of us. But we are in a time of troubles. Why is the devil creating the troubles? Because he wants to change our hearts. The devil wants us to change our hearts. He doesn't care about the other things that we change. He wants us to change our hearts. And we must not let our hearts be changed. We must have complete confidence in the victory of the Holy Mother Mary, in the victory of our Holy Mother the Church, in the victory of the saints, and that sometimes we'll be allowed to stand apparently alone. It looks like we're alone. It looks like we're only a few against the entire world. But in fact, we have all the saints and all the angels on our side, and we are not alone. Therefore, there should be no loss of hope. And most importantly, there must not be a loss of charity. As we lose our funds, as we lose our houses, as we lose our health, as we lose our position in society, as we lose all the things we have, we must get busy. Always notice myself with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. In the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the consecration happens right in the middle. It's the exact amount of time, almost the same amount of time before the consecration as after. But before the consecration, we have many words, so many words, many prayers, many readings, many words. After the consecration, we have very few words. Because there is a time when you must read when you go to school. 
There is a time when you must learn. There is a time when you must hear. And then there is a time when you must act. This is the time of action. When our Lord Jesus Christ enters into the cross, he enters the time of action. And then we must, and what is our action? It is to act with the spirit of charity. Now, charity is of no value if it is not inspired by great hope. And charity is of no value if it does not come from faith. In fact, charity without hope and faith is not charity. Some kind of a fake semblance, but it is not charity. Therefore, our Lord says, when you hear about the wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled. When you hear about all the earthquakes and the tsunamis, be not troubled. When you hear about all the difficulties around you, be not troubled. But then you will see brothers hating brothers and sisters hating sisters and fathers and mothers hating children and priests hating priests and bishops hating bishops and all the church filled with hatred. Let not this hatred enter the heart. For the devil is trying to get hatred inside of our heart. He's trying to get a spirit of vengeance inside of our hearts. And remember as Catholics, we know how to say beautifully, I'm going to pray for you. In other words, I want you dead, and I'm going to slip you in little pieces. That's what pray for you means. I am going to pray for you. We know how to say beautiful words, filled with hate and filled with venom. And I only think about your soul, which we hope is going to burn forever in hell. And so what are we thinking about the soul? We say beautiful things, and they sound so wonderful, but there is venom in the heart. And this venom does not get past the angels and saints. It doesn't get past Satan. It doesn't deceive anyone, except for a few fools that are willingly deceived. We must not let the lack of charity enter into us. There must be the spirit of charity. There must be the spreading of our holy faith. There must be the confidence in God, and there must be the spirit of charity. Now, the spirit of charity brings to us a certain kind of joy and confidence. And this joy and confidence needs to be inside of us. For the devil is trying to attack three things. The principles of the supernatural life inside of each one of us. He's attacking our faith, which is the last thing he's able to conquer. He's attacking our hope, and he's attacking our charity. But he who perseveres in charity unto the end, he shall be saved. That's what Christ says at the end of the gospel today. He that perseveres in charity unto the end, he shall be saved. Those who have little hope, but not true hope, and those who keep only the faith, they shall not have enough to be saved. But those who persevere in charity shall be. And let us make sure this maintains our spirit. Somehow St. Januarius is able to help the people of Naples 1,700 years after he died. So are all the other saints. You can call upon St. Joseph, you can call upon St. Anthony, and call upon the saints, and they will help you. You can call upon the angels, and they will protect us. They are here now to protect us. We must have confidence in them, and call upon them and upon their help, and to ask them to teach us their spirit and their ways. And who will teach us the ways of the saints? The mother of all the saints. The mother who made them all saints and holds them all in the palm of her hand and in her womb. So let us love the Holy Mother of God and let us keep the spirit of faith and charity and hope inside of us. Never let it be stamped out. Because the devil is trying to attack those who still keep the faith. He will take away their faith at the end. The devil will. But he's trying to attack those who still keep the faith by attacking their hope and confidence and our part in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and his Holy Mother. And by attacking our charity, let not these things be troubled or attacked or destroyed. We love you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.